Twisting, turning, adjusting. Trying to find that extra tenth of a second can go on for just so long. There comes a time when all the preparation and conference must end. You can see it on the faces of the drivers. They know when practice is over, it's time to strap in for two qualifying laps and try to move as high as possible on the speed chart. ARCA qualifying round one is next. Well, preparation and practice has concluded, and now it's time for the run under the gun. You know it as ARCA pole qualifying today. 65, a record tying 72 entries are set to stand on the gas for five miles. Two consecutive laps on this two and a half mile tri -oval. and the speed to beat we'll see early, including Mark Thompson, the Midway Island Ford. He will roll off in second position. And how about former Daytona Beach, Florida resident, Mark Gibson, car number 59, his Ford, second fastest in testing this morning in practice. He will be a guy to watch in qualifying. Just a couple of names that'll be battling for the front. But the real stampede comes further in the back of the pack. The names that are battling just to make the field. 21-year-old Billy Venturini is scheduled to go out 64th of the 65 qualifiers. On a blustery Wednesday, he battled high winds and no Daytona experience, struggling to find the right groove, searching for speed. But today, in the final practice session before qualifying, he was eighth fastest. Not the same story for 19-year-old Adam Larson. Of 45 cars timed in the first practice this morning, Adam was 36th overall. He skipped the second practice session so his team could thoroughly prepare his car for this critical qualifying run. He got some tips from Mike Wallace but didn't get a chance to try them out. And now his next laps here will be his qualifying laps at Daytona. ESPN Speed World welcomes you live to our continuing coverage of Speed Weeks 98 here at Daytona International Speedway. Today, it's the ARCA Bondo Marheit Series and qualifying for Sunday's First Plus Financial 200. The first car will roll out in just a few minutes. We have time to talk about what might happen here today. And Benny, uh, Jerry mentioned that there are 65 qualifiers today, but really only about a handful of those are really going for the pole. I'm really confused. I walked through the garage here this morning. We all know that qualifying up front is so important. But I walked through the garage area and everyone says, well, I think we're not going to qualify that well, but we're going to race well. Everyone seems to be in the race mode rather than the qualifying mode. Well, there's one thing you got to remember, folks. Only one driver that's in this field has ever won a pole here at Daytona, and his name's Andy Hillenberg. So if Hillenberg doesn't win the pole today, somebody else will, and it might be the biggest day of their career. Well, if you're in the seat in one of these ARCA stock cars, you will be in a 93 through 98 model with 3,400 pounds. And we can see 358 cubic inch, compression ratio 12 to 1, top speed 190 miles per hour. These cars do use a 15 16 restrictor plate, which robs these engines of about 250 to 300 horsepower. As the first car rolled. This is Rick Eckert from York, Pennsylvania, going out of the red list, excavating Ford. His best speed was turned in in the uh, last practice session that we just had, 179.062. Today, in qualifying, we will determine only the first 25 starters. 26 through 36 determined tomorrow in round two. Provisionals will go to 37 through 40, and if necessary, the 41st starting position will involve a past champion. And once again, Bob, that past champion's provisional is reserved for someone who's won the title, and the only guy in the field that's done that is Andy Hillenberg. So he's the only guy that could take that past champion's provisional. I don't think he's going to need it. Yes, it is windy again here today, but not nearly as windy as it was yesterday. We had gusts up to 35, sometimes even 45 miles an hour. But today we have sustained winds between 15 and 20 and really no major gusts that are blowing out there. The green flag is waved and Eckert is on his qualifying run. Watch the car. We'll see all kinds of lines to the corner. He was about the middle of the racetrack. We'll see some of these cars right on the bottom, right next to that white line. There's Mark Thompson, the next qualifier. He'll be next. And this is a guy that is one of the five or six cars you talked about that does, in fact, have a chance to sit on the pole. 
and more than likely the second lap will be the fastest during most of these qualifying runs for one reason because of the restrictor plate they're using. That's right. They only have about 450 horsepower at their just that they can use and it takes these cars about three miles to get up to full speed. So the first lap they're just simply getting the car up to speed. White flag is out. Eckert has completed his first of two qualifying laps. This is a 1995 Thunderbird that he is driving. Out of turn number two and ready to challenge the backstretch. The wind will be in favor of the drivers as they go down the backstretch. They have a tailwind. And when they come through the trioval here, they'll be bucking a headwind. Into turn number three, about a lane off the very bottom of the racetrack. First lap for Eckert was 51.734 average speed, 173.967. And there you see it as Eckert comes by, takes a checkered flag. He will probably pick up somewhere around half second. So we should see him go down to around 51 and a quarter seconds. And traditionally here at Daytona, the second lap is always the fastest. Some racetracks that we go to, you'll see a guy click off a real fast lap on the first lap, but not here at Daytona. Because of the use of those restrictor plates, it takes them quite a while to get up to full speed. Second lap was quicker by quite a bit, 51.416 seconds and up to 175.0. Four, three. And we see Old Faithful where the water's coming out the overflow. And we'll see that a lot today as these, they put tape on the grill and the water will get extremely warm when they shut the engines down. They'll be using a lot, be blowing a lot of oil, uh, water out the overflow. Jerry Punch? Well, as Mark Thompson comes up to speed, guys, we're going to see the thermostat be set, the speeds to look at when he runs here momentarily. Mark this morning in final practice prior to qualifying was seventh quickest. He ran a 48.631. Just a moment ago, prior to putting the window net up, he turned and said, I hope I can run a 48.80. I think I'll be comfortable in the 80s, maybe in the mid-70s, which should put me in the top five or six starters on Sunday. There you can see the practice speeds that were turned in this morning with Kenny Irwin, uh, the fastest of all. However, the fastest lap that we have seen remains Bill Bear's 186.4 that was turned in during the heavy winds yesterday. Mark Thompson looking for his fourth career pole position he had one last year at Michigan talking about those practice times that we saw this morning Bob Rick Eckert ran 178 miles an hour in his practice and his fastest lap in qualifying was 175.043 so his car slowed down quite a bit we'll have to see if the same thing holds true for any of these other drivers and Benny he is way higher than uh, Eckert was on his lap there yes. for the third and fourth turns he really is uh, you would think that they'd want to get the car a little bit lower on the racetrack in the corners here comes Thompson by, completes his first lap. And his first lap was a pretty good lap, 48.990. Average speed for Thompson, 183.711 miles per hour. And he's almost halfway around on lap number two. He is from Cartersville, Georgia. This is the Midway Island 95 for Thunderbird. We talked to Thompson this morning. He's going to do something that he thought was going to be very exciting next weekend. He will not be here for the Daytona 500 or even watching on TV. He is going to be with an expedition trying to find Amelia Earhart. Is that right? Down in the South Pacific. I'll be darned. Okay, here he comes off the fourth corner into the trival. Mark Thompson about to complete his second lap of qualifying. There's the checkered flag. His first lap again, 183.711. And his second lap is faster. It's 48.888 and the speed 184.094 miles an hour. I'd be pretty surprised, guys, if that is able to hold up for the pole here at Daytona. We've got a number of cars that ran 185 in their practice time and we'll see if they're able to do it today. Our coverage on ESPN Speed World will continue throughout the day here today, and then tomorrow we'll be on the air at 1 o'clock Eastern time with more ARCA qualifying. Also, the first look at the Winston Cup cars, IROC, and those eligible for the Bud Shootout. Then on Saturday, we'll have the Bush Pole qualifying for the NASCAR Winston Cup cars at 2 o'clock Eastern time. Sunday, 
Last chance qualifier with the winner going to the Bud Shootout at 11 o'clock and then the ARCA race, the first plus financial 200 at 1.30 Eastern Time. RPM tonight is live here at Daytona International Speedway every night this week with John Kernan as your host. Join him at 7 o'clock this evening. ESPN Speed World coverage of ARCA qualifying here at Daytona International Speedway being brought to you by Daytona USA, the ultimate motorsports attraction. Mark Gibson has qualified while we were in break. How do you do, BP? He did real well. Fast lap for Gibson, the second lap, 48. 703 average speed 184 794 and you see on the right hand side of your screen currently first second fastest qualifiers with bill weber that's mark thompson of 48 88 all you had that was about what we thought we had run uh, we made a couple of gambles and uh I, I, I'm happy with the time. I mean, this this car races real well. It's just not the best qualifying car in the world. Weather conditions out there, the wind. I think I think the wind affected us uh, a pretty good bit. You know, you've got a real strong wind coming off of three and four that really, you know, sort of cuts into your speed. But uh, I'm happy with the car. It'll race well. If a guy catches a break and doesn't have that breeze, is he going to have an advantage? Oh yeah, a tremendous advantage. You know, if, if if the breeze were to lay down coming off of turn four, it'd be a It'd be worth three, four tens. I mean, it's 25 knots a win. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that. Trouble for the nine car guys? Uh, he is up to speed now. He was they, down on the apron of the track. The tire is rubbing the left rear quarter panel. It's getting so soft in the back that the tire, when mm -hmm. the body goes down, is yep. rubbing the fender. And you can see it through turns three and four. The driver is David Hall. Uh, and he has practiced at 163.336, so he has struggled somewhat in the practice so far. And Bob, after the, the last practice that we saw here this morning, David Hall came off the racetrack and was having a severe overheating problem in that nine car. They've been in the back in the garage working on it, and he hasn't had much time on the racetrack. And first lap was not that fast, and it looks like he's going to shut it down. He did uh, first lap 55. Seconds, a little over 55 seconds. Average speed 163.440 miles per hour. So David Hall will be taking the car to the garage here. And we see the, mm -hmm. once again, Old Faithful going up right behind the right front fender as the engine begins to steam. So four qualifiers so far being led by Mark Gibson at 184.794. By the way, uh, Hillenburg Andy Hillenburg qualified for the poll last year here at Daytona at 185.166. Bill? 4870 mark right now you're the provisional pole sitter will you be the pole sitter when this day is done i don't think that'll get it it's going to cool off longer the day goes you know kenny Irwin's still got to go we we figured we could run a 50 we did in practice but when you have cars out on the racetrack even though you can't see them if they're breaking a little wind out there it helps some so who knows i hope it is but i can't see a 70 getting a pole and mark thompson told us the wind will be a factor here oh yeah it's definitely a factor we was hoping it died down when we went out but it was gusting pretty good so uh I don't know, pretty, really, I guess that's good, but just disappointed. We thought we could run at least a 50. Okay, we'll be watching with you. Good luck. Thank you. That's Mark Gibson. He's the provisional pole sitter here at Daytona. Qualifying underway for the first bus financial 200 at the Daytona International Speedway. ESPN 2's coverage continues in a moment. First round arc of qualifying underway here at Daytona on the racetrack. Car number four driven by David Boggs, whose best lap so far in practice, a 170.396. Well, if he gets, if he picks up the second lap, he'll be able to run faster than that. Watch as he bottoms out the exhaust system, bottoming on the racetrack down in turns one and two. First lap, 52, 8.94, 170.1. 0.152 miles per hour, and is already old faithful is spewing, spewing forth. Spewing this. Yes. <laughs> the water is coming out of the four car. Has a little bit too much tape on, and that will slow the car down. As the engine gets that warm, it will start slowing down. Driver from Rock Hill, South Carolina. This is the Power Alliance NJA Brakes 97 Monte Carlo. He's coming for the checkered flag to complete the run. This will be the completion of the run and our fifth qualifier of the day. And his second lap is indeed faster. It's 52.750 seconds and the speed 170.616. And that is currently fourth fastest. That's the best lap he's run here at Daytona so far. He, he practiced around 170 
70.1, but 170.6 is really good. Dr. Jerry Punch, I believe, is standing by with a guy who may have a shot at the pole, and that's Bill Baird. Exactly, Ray. 47-year-old Bill Baird getting strapped in. He is four cars away from making his run. Yesterday, he was by far the quickest car here. And, Bill, yesterday you ran a 48-26. No one could touch you. Today, you haven't been that close. Did you have a problem? No, you know, today we just went out and uh, actually made one qualifying run, Jerry, and uh, made one lap and uh, pulled it in. It was good. And I think the car's going to really be good here today. Uh, I have a chance for the first pole. All right, Mark Gibson right now, the quickest overall at 48.70. What do you predict you'll run? Um, I'm going to really be displeased if we don't go. Go up 48. Uh, 48, 3 or 4, I'm going to be disappointed if we don't get there. Um, hey, I got to say hi to my dad back home. He's ever seen me at a super speedway before, and this is for him. All right, he wants a pole, and he thinks it'll be a 48, 30 or 40, and if he does that, no one will touch him. That's for sure. We'll know in just a few minutes. Meanwhile, we have Lansing, Michigan's Jeff Finley on the racetrack and the Radius Motorsports Ford. Just taken the green flag and is headed down the back stretch. We see how much they're squatting, how much the rear of these cars are squatting going down. And in our competition, they have a minimum on the rear springs. They have to be at least a 300 pound spring. In other words, it takes 300 pounds of pressure to uh, compress the spring one inch and in the NASCAR and Winston Cup cars they don't have restrictions like that they'll probably be using 175s 150 springs like that so they'll really be squatting as they go around the racetrack Finley's first lap Ray looks to me like he ran a 50.853 that's about 176 miles an hour see if he's able to pick that up a little bit and get himself up over uh, 180. I'm sure he'd be happy with that. Best lap was yesterday at 178.486. Jerry? Talking about horsepower in these ARCA cars, there's a little bit of difference between the ARCA cars and the Winston Cup cars. The plate for the ARCA cars is 15 sixteenths of an inch, whereas it's 29 30 seconds, so an extra 30 seconds for the ARCA cars over Winston Cup. But the biggest difference is the cam, a roller tappet cam uh, for the ARCA cars versus a flat tappet cam for Winston Cup. What is that in horsepower numbers as Jeff Finley takes the checkered flag? Well, ARCA, they're telling me a good ARCA motor. Mark Thompson said his motor was 422 horsepower. A very good Winston Cup motor. Robert Yates, for example, around 410. So 12 horsepower difference. Why aren't they faster? Well, they got this parachute on the back. They call a spoiler, which stands some six and a half inches tall and 60 degrees into the wind. Couple of tenths faster on lap number two for Jeff Finley, 50.657, 177.665. He's third fastest so far. You know, last season, Jeff Finley, Finley really had a great year in the Arcabondo Marheide Series. He didn't run the first four races of the year because this team was kind of in a transition. They got a hold of Finley. They said, let's go chase the points, and they finished seventh in the final points. This year, they're hoping to run every race and maybe do better than that. Well, here's a guy who won two pole positions in ARCA competition last year at Michigan and Charlotte from Albemarle, North Carolina. That's the way you pronounce it, isn't it? No, Albemarle. Marl? Album Marl. Album Marl. Easy yeah. for you to Easy say. Easy to say. Gary Layton is on the track in the Tampico Punch Washington Apple Chevrolet. Green flag coming out. Now that's a really good looking race car, folks. They've got this car looking sharp and all lettered up real nice. But this is an intermediate style race car. This is one that they would normally run in a place like Michigan or Charlotte. It's not a really great super speedway car. But he said, man, if we can get in the top 10, I'll be pretty happy. That's what everybody told me. <laughs> Dr. Jerry Punch is with Norm Benning. Well, Norm finished eighth overall in ARCA points a year ago. And Norm debuts a new sponsor on the car, which, it, which Norm told me he thought would make Benny very, very happy. It suddenly reads his new heart hair transplant. The 1 800 number. Hey, Norm, that looks almost real. That's a great looking job there. Uh, where did the hair transplant sponsor come from? Jerry, they're out of Pittsburgh. That's where they originated. Uh, new Heart Hair Clinics. They're in uh, Pittsburgh, Johnstown, and Manhattan, New York City. And uh, I've already talked to Benny. We're going to have a clinic here probably Saturday. Anybody else? Who, uh, you can't believe the technology today. With hair replacement, it's great. I didn't realize this until I went to New Heart Hair. And people have to realize how good this company is. Well, speaking of good, is this sponsorship going to be good enough to get you up front starting and qualifying? We're working on it. 
We just signed this deal two weeks ago, so we haven't had a lot of time for preparation, but we guarantee you we'll be faster than Atlanta. Hey, good luck to you in qualifying. Thank you. Hey, I'm told the lady who owns these clinics was very disappointed when she first met Norm. She wanted him to be totally bald. She was really, really upset that he had a full head of hair, but hey, they wanted to be on the race car, so here they are. My question is, is BP going to get a hair transplant? Huh? You know, that hair is way overrated. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think it, I, huh? I don't. Who needs it? I don't think I'd look good with hair. Well, Gary Layton ran uh, a lap that he probably isn't really happy with on the last one. 176. We'll see how much he was able to improve on that on the second lap. Well, he, it's slower, Ray. Yeah, that's, that's kind of unusual. Not a good lap for them at all. They ran 181 miles an hour in practice. That's a significant difference. So they've gone much slower than they had hoped to. Layton's best lap was his first 176.543 at 50.979 that currently puts him fourth out of the seven qualifiers that we have had so far. ARCA cars are qualifying at Daytona International Speedway for Sunday's first plus financial 200. ESPN Weeks 98 at Daytona. We're qualifying the ARCA cars here this afternoon. Seven have gone onto the racetrack, and there's a rundown of who's where at the moment with the fastest speed, 184.7 so far for Mark Gibson. Well, Jim Hurlbut's on the Hurlbut's on the racetrack. Uh, first lap, 170.15. He's trying his best to pick it up. Morning. So here's another guy who has struggled somewhat since going on to the track yesterday. Hurlbert out of turn number four of the qualifying run. Cars, you know, the sixth and seventh place cars are running 170 miles an hour. They'll be lucky to make it in the show with that type of a speed. So at Hurlbert there posts into the seventh uh, fastest position of the day. Second lap was just a little bit faster at 52.689, 170.8. One for Bill Weber is down on pit road with Jeff Finley and you admit yeah you know we we pretty much beat ourselves up we've thrown everything at it but the kitchen sink so we'll take it I mean we run a little bit better than that yesterday and uh, five so we could work on our race setup but we missed it and uh, hopefully some of these other guys will slow down and we'll be okay all right good luck thank you very much to Jerry Punch with Harris Devane. I want to show you a piece of tape on Harris Devane's dash. It says brakes written across it in a magic marker. And what that does is it reminds a driver about one of the tricks they use for qualifying here in Daytona. We'll let Harris explain what they do with the brakes. Harris, what have you done with the brakes? We push the brakes pads away from the blow on the brakes and uh, hope it on. That's right. You actually got to what, pump them a couple? Cut the tires, get the brakes back up. That's right. All right, you won in Atlanta. Great, uh, great effort on ESPN. What about today? Give us a time prediction on what you're going to run in qualifying. Uh, we run 49.5 in practice, and I hope we can duplicate that 49.5 again. But it seems like everybody's in slow down, so I don't know. I hope we can do a 49.5. All right, here's Devane, the peanut farmer from Cuthbert, Georgia, who won an Atlanta Motor Speedway in the Arca finale. Said he put a couple extra peanuts in it today. Maybe get with Bill Weber. With Gary Layton, a winner at Charlotte last year, but a very disappointed young man here in Daytona. You're way off the mark. Yeah, in, in practice, we'd run a lot of like a 49.70, and we thought we would duplicate that or at least do a little better. It was like 6,500 RPMs and ought to be around 68. So we don't know if we just got a little miss in the motor or what happened. Did you feel anything or the ride or in the motor? No, I really couldn't tell anything. You know, you just knew we wasn't getting the RPMs in practice to try to get more RPMs and then drop back to the 300. And that's where we run best at. And that's what we had in that time. But for some reason, it just didn't come together. All right, good luck. Thank you. Checkered flag for the 10 car, guys. Len Brewer has completed actually just his first lap on a 177.193. His best lap, 8.642. Man, is he running the high line. You'd think he was running the race and passing cars. I noticed every corner he's been in so far. By the way, wherever you can't tell the difference in a white flag and a checkered flag anymore. <laughs> You see on their speed demon on the quarter panels, a brand new sponsor for Glenn Brewer as he's in kind of a new deal this year. He's teamed up with Dick Tracy and the Colony Motorsports folks, and they've got a brand new deal together. And hopefully Glenn's going to get out and do some racing. Last year, he only ran two races in the Arca Bondo Marheit Series, and normally he competes for all the race. 
How do you do on the second lap? 50.531 average speed spot. So good. A couple of marks on the front row at the moment. Mark Gibson on the pole and Mark Thompson on the outside of row number one. But only nine cars have qualified so far. And we have 65 that will attempt qualification here this afternoon. A lot of big names coming up in the next few moments. We'll be back for that in just a moment. First lap of qualifying complete for the number 53 car, driven by Bob Kelly from Tallahassee, Florida, the Kelly Brothers Sheet Metal Pontiac. Lap number one, the seventh fastest so far. 52.158, average speed 172.553 miles per hour. You said that currently is in seventh spot. And Jerry Punch is with Ron Barfield, who will uh, be out to qualify before long. Indeed he will, Bob. Ron uh, qualified second last year and finished second. The wind, a huge factor. How bad was it? Man, I tell you, you know, this wind was really blowing here. And I went down the front straightaway. I called my crew chief up, Vic, and I said, Vic, something's wrong with the motor in this thing. Then I went down the back straightaway. I said, no, nah, it just freed up. And uh, there was 300 RPMs difference from the back stretch to the front stretch. It was 6,900 down the back, 66 down the front. I mean, that's the most I've ever seen at this place. But, uh, you know, it blowed cars around a little bit in the corners, but down the straightaway, it wasn't as bad as I thought. How about today? I'm told that you've got a new TNL motor in this morning. Put it in the car number two that you're driving for. Around this morning, we're still working on it. I mean, this is a brand new race car, and, you know, me and Vic are really working together here, and we're trying some different stuff. And, uh, we're getting it closer and closer, but we hadn't quite got it yet. I mean, I believe it's going to be a, uh, we're looking right now for the top 10, get in a race, and then we'll draft and have some fun Sunday. All right, have some fun Sunday. We will, too. Hey. We'll be watching you. Ron Barfield hoping to qualify in the top 10. Bill Weber standing by with a former ARCA hey. Rookie of the Year. Well, Glenn Brewer, your qualifying run, are you pleased with your time? Not really. I think we got some more left in it, but we just got the shocks and got them on the course. Now we need to work on this bottom and out pretty bad. And what are you going to do? Uh, we're going to go back and take a look at it and see if we can get it where it don't bottom out when we go a little faster. I think we're scrubbing off a lot of speed through the corners. All right, good luck. Thank you. Okay, and now a potential pole sitter on the track. Indeed, the green flag comes out for Bill Baird from Sturgis, Kentucky. And yesterday, he had the fastest in practice at 186.486, but in December when they were here to that. And there's a line that you'd think most of these cars would run right down next to the white line. And we can see the back end of the car as it sags as you go down the straightaway. The wind pushing down on the back. Did not bottom out in one or two like Glenn Brewer. Glenn Brewer was talking about how the car bottomed out and he felt like that scrubbed some speed off. This time we see no sign whatsoever that Bill could line around the racetrack. This should be. This is about as good as this car is going around a racetrack, according to his line. Crosses the strike, takes the white flag. We'll see how. 8.560 seconds, 185.338. And remember, Bob, this was his first lap, so the next lap should even be faster. Jerry? I am told out here, the guy you're looking at there, Timmy Cahooth, who is the crew chief for Bill Baird. He works for Kenny Schrader and is the crew chief. Thomas, Timmy Cahooth and the crew, a huge bonus if he sat on the pole. So you talk about smiles down here. When he came by the first time, they were all smiling. He's got one more. Bill Baird takes the checkered flag and completes the run. Lap and lap number two is... 186. Wow. 186.197 miles an hour. What a great lap for Bill Baird. We see the seconds, Jerry. You told me he'd run a 35. You missed it by a hundredth of a second, a 36. Congratulations. Yeah, I got me a 48-year-old rookie. <laughs> but he listens real good, and they're a good team, and I'm just down here trying to help them. And they should be pretty good all year. They just got real good equipment, so I'm just happy for the boys. Mike Wallace told me they promised you guys a huge bonus, a hot dog or two. Yeah, I hopefully he does. <laughs> yeah, Wallace will have to chip in for that big bonus, too. All right, Timmy Ho, congratulations so far, but it's not over by a long shot. Some 40 cars left to run, but Bill Baird at 47 years of age, a rookie in ARCA this year at Daytona. Thus far on the provisional pole, we come back for more qualifying from Daytona International Speedway after this. First round quarter Daytona, they race on Sunday in the first plus financial 200. On the racetrack is Russell Landrum from Stockbridge, Georgia. And he has just completed his run. His first lap was seventh fast, and the second lap was even quicker. 642, 
Average speed, as you see, 177.718, currently fifth spot. And currently, let's, let's put the jinx on the pole setter, right, Bill? <laughs> I'm not going to say the P word. I just want to tell you, you were pretty quick out there. How did it feel? Feel real good. You know, um, I actually messed up a little bit coming out on the track. And I couldn't get the tires down. And What'd you do? What'd you do? I just uh, overspun the tires coming out of the pits and I finally backed out of it, let it get, you know, grab a hold again. And it hurt us a little bit, but uh, Timmy said I went a four or something. And uh, I was looking for a four and uh, we got there. 48. Point three three, and you promised them a big bonus if it stands up or something, right? Bill, you know, 365 days. I couldn't wait to get back down here. And uh, last year we come here, we the top 15, third. When I left here, I said, you know, if there's any way we're going to win the pole, and, and hopefully it'll hold up. If it doesn't, we give it his best shot and watch out Sunday. Okay, he's still shaking. Could be a big night in Sturgis, Kentucky. Let's go to Dr. Punch with Mike Wallace. 1994 winner of the first plus financial 200 as Harris Devane flashes by on his qualifying run. Mike, got to ask you, I heard, before we talk about qualifying, I heard you injured yourself on the dance floor the other night. <laughs> Benny must have ratted. <laughs> <real nice. laughs> the last Friday night we were in Charlotte there at a fundraiser, you know, National uh, Head Injury Foundation fundraiser. And uh, as I tell everybody, it was alcohol inflicted. I never drank and I was, and uh, I was going to do the Blues Brothers slide across the floor except my foot caught. And, Tore my hamstring muscle and then to you the right one to push the throttle here. How about qualifying? <laughs> qualifying, I don't know. You know, we're uh, we're struggling for speed. It's I was kidding Timmy Cahooth, you know, they sat on the pole. I like to congratulate him and Bill Baird and uh, they says, Well you, we run a thirty. I said, Well I can do that in a different second bracket, you know, but uh, we're just hoping to get out of here with a top 10, top 15 today. I think we had a great effort with all the guys that helped borrow. <laughs> I told, somebody told me it's BBS Racing. Beg, borrow, and steal. Whatever you could get your hand on. You got you got help from Yates. You got help from Penske. You got the Cranifus car. Anybody else give you anything? Yeah, just a lot of guys. Schrader helped me with the truck and trailer and the guys and everything. You know, uh, we did everything but steal. We begged and borrowed a lot. But I'd like to thank Michael Cranifus and Paul Andrews from the Cranifus, or Penske Cranifus team now, and, and Rusty's group up there for loaning us some parts and pieces, and Robert and... Doug Yates for helping me with driving really well, and uh, we're not a contender for the pole, but we're here to have a good time. All the guys, you know, we ran so well at Orlando in our truck and didn't win the race. We come a four lap short from leading the thing, and it was like, we don't really want to sit around until April again before we can go racing, so it's come to Daytona. I believe you're going to get one of those Craftsman truck wins pretty soon, but best of luck to you today in qualifying. Well, thank you very much. I think we'll win one real shortly. I agree. Mike Wallace getting ready to qualify. He's about eight or ten cars left to go out, but uh, Harris Devane puts him in the top five, right, guys? Yeah, he's fourth quick his best lap was his second, 182.278. We all remember last year at Atlanta when Harris Devane was battling for the lead. He came out of turn four, and Benny said, it looks like the car has been shot. I where that came from. <laughs> That's when Harris, I said, I think I meant Cannon. I, I think, think I meant too. Cannon. He won the race anyway. Yeah. That's what matters. <laughs> That's right. And he's fourth quick so far here today. We've had 13 qualifiers for Sunday's first plus financial 200 ARCA race. We'll be right back. ESPN Speed World happy to join in the celebration of NASCAR's 50th anniversary here in 1998. We're doing several things on the air in conjunction with that, including the 50, five programs that air on Friday nights. And this coming Friday night is the fourth uh, edition Southern Exposure as we take a look behind the scenes at what has made NASCAR racing what it is today. It's at 8 o'clock Eastern time on Friday night, NASCAR's the 50. As qualifying continues, we go... 9.37, you were a little bit... Car's a little too tight, but uh, that's faster than... That's a pretty fast lap for us. We've been running like 49.5 by ourselves, so we're pretty satisfied with that. Yeah, the sheets had you a little faster, but you got a toe, huh? He's, he's running the draft when we got the 49. That's not fair, Harris. We'll have none of that. That's right. That's not fair. Okay, what are you going to do on uh, Sunday? Hope we're going to win this thing for Georgia Peanuts and Bob's Candy and Burger Lemon Company. Okay. For new sponsors for this race, and we're looking forward to running up front. We'll be watching. Uh, thank you. Now, how about another finish like Atlanta? I can hope, you do that for us? I hope we can duplicate that same finish and do uh, it again. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Be shot out of a canyon. No, I was going to say, I'm a little sorry he didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Neil Cunningham to the checkered flag. This young man is from Towster, England. And his first lap wasn't all that great. And his second lap wasn't much better. 57 
point zero six six average speed one fifty seven point seven one two miles per hour and as you can see currently he's 14th of the 14 cars that have qualified so far a real veteran is in the car ready to go out soon dr jerry's with him indeed bob if there's a sentimental favorite here it has to be 58 year old tom bigelow from winchester indiana currently a member of the uh, usac sprint car hall of fame nine indy 500 so six, sixth place finish at indy back at tom here this week uh, this weekend getting ready for arca it has been a struggle Yes, it has, Doc. It just seems like we can't get this engine to, to turn loose and, and run. We've tried about everything. Uh, we're just going to have to give her a try now and then change engines tomorrow. We've got another engine lined up here, but, you know, just uh, we were hoping we could find out what was wrong with this, but we just can't do it. What do you think you can run? You just want to get a lap in because of the weather, and I know the weather is threatening on Saturday when second round qualifying would go. Yeah, we just got to get a, our two laps in today, uh, you know, hope that we can go fast enough to make it. But that other engine, I'm sure, will run 184, 185. But the car is capable of doing it. We've got the crew to do it. But we just got to get the motor to turn loose. All right, Tom Bigelow, 58 years of age. You can see the desire in his eyes. The body may age, but the eyes and the heart still burns for this veteran to be able to run Daytona. Boy, can he drive a sprint car. Saw him win many a sprint car race in the Midwest. Now, Norm Benning is on the racetrack in car number 84, and uh, he has not been doing too bad out there in practice. This is the New Heart Hair Clinic car that Jerry Punch was talking to Norm a little bit about a moment ago. Norm did not qualify for the 1997 First Plus Financial 200 here at Daytona. And he's hoping to get in this time and try to run all the races in 1998. See what he did on lap number one. Not very good. 52, 693, average speed, 170.801. Currently in 12th spot. Needs to pick it up. So we've qualified 15 now, BP, and what would you say the 25th cutoff speed and time is going to be? About 177, 178 it's going to take to make the top 25. Okay. Norm Benning is on the back stretch, headed into turn number three on his second lap of qualifying. I think Norm's hairpiece must have fallen off or something because he was in line up there to go from adjustments to that car. Take the hair. <laughs> okay, so he picked up one spot. And he picked up two tenths of a second, 52.479, 52.479, average speed, 171.497. Another guy down there with a, a bona fide chance to sit on the pole today is Bobby Gearhart. Jerry, don't you think so? I totally agree, BP. Gerhardt was fifth quickest this morning in practice. If you believe in numerology, he's got a brand new number. It's number five. New colors, purple. Talking about purple power. Kawhi and Casinos, they got a bundle of money behind him. And this guy's smiling. Do you know something we don't know? Well, I guess we're about to show our hand, huh? Uh-oh. I mean, you shake a little sand out of your shoes and practice the last couple of days? Well, we've been playing a little, uh, little game right now, and uh, we're three cars away from showing what we got. I think we're going to be in good shape. All right. The, the time to beat is 48.36. That is a remarkable time by Bill Baird. Can you do it? I believe so, Jerry. I really do. I think what it comes down to, uh, if the tolerance on the restrictor plate that, uh, that we got from ARCA meets what we've had, and we get a little tailwind, I think we could be up front. All right, as you, uh, we talked to Bobby Gerhardt, Glenn Morgan, who was the uh, 13th in practice this morning in the car number 11, the personal injury attorney from Texas out to get his qualifying run, talking to Bobby Gerhardt. And Bobby, what would it mean for you to be able to get that first super speedway win here at Daytona? Well, it would certainly mean a lot with uh, new sponsor, Quaid and Casinos on board for 98 season. Uh, We've put a lot of effort into this uh, this two-lap session I'm about to give right now. We've put uh, a few thousand miles on Interstate 81 from Pennsylvania to a lot of these speedways, and it sure showed. I've got a lot of help from a lot of volunteer guys, and we're looking forward to a good race. If there was a Mr. Congeniality in ARCA, Bobby Gerhardt would probably win it. He is well-liked by so many of the competitors, and believe me, it would be a very popular victory if he could put this car on the pole or send it to victory lane. The casino car may just have an ace up his sleeve and qualify. Bob? All right. Glenn Morgan comes down and completes lap number one. Jerry mentioned that he was 13th quickest in practice today. However, yesterday he was even 
quicker than that at 173.517. How do you do? Good lap. Whoa. 49.290, 182.5. Nine three miles per hour. Still got a lap to go. And Bob, what Gary, Bobby Gerhardt was talking about down there in the car, he said, we're hoping that this plate will match the one we used earlier. The reason he said that is when they go to qualify and win their race on Sunday, they are using an official ARCA plate that they've given them to put on the car. But during practice, they use their own restrictor plate. And sometimes just a, you know, a thousandth of an inch on that plate could make a big difference in your speed. Let's see if he picked up 182.5 the first lap. Lynn Morgan was talking about being a lawyer for the plaintiff. And I said, does that mean you're the hit or the hit ease lawyer? <laughs> he said, that's the hit E. Hit E, that's right. Hey, Second lap, was pick it up. Faster, yep. 49.040, 183.524 miles per hour, currently in fourth spot. So the attorney from Beaumont, Texas, is fourth fastest so far out of the 16 that have qualified for Sunday's first plus financial 200 Arca Bondo Marhide race. Back in just a moment. We're at Daytona International Speedway tonight. They tell me that this is a big, a big basketball game. Big game, big game. <laughs> it's on the deuce at nine o'clock tonight and it features the top rated team against number two, Duke and North Carolina. Nine o'clock tonight, Eastern time. Big, big. Eh? You, know how, you know how I know that the game is big? Why is it big? Subject to blackout right now. Ah, there. that means it's big, huh? Big, real big. Here's Jerry. Hey, I'm standing with Kenny Irwin. Think you're talking about racing? Ah, guess again, they're talking about basketball. Kenny, your prediction tonight, Duke in North Carolina in Chapel Hill with the Dean Dome. Uh, well, who did Dale Jarrett pick? Oh, he's a North Carolina fan. Well, then I'll go with North Carolina. Uh, I don't know. what. I, probably, you know, they'll probably beat him by 10 or 15 points. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, I, let's you and I talk when it's over with. I'm going to make some money. Anyway, talk about qualifying here for just a moment. Uh, you were the fastest car this morning in both sessions. Uh, can you beat a 336, 48.336? Um, I guess you know who we'd have to ask is um, is Doug Yates. Doug, would you come here for a second? Come here, Doug. Come here, Doug. Yeah, Doug, Doug, yeah. Doug Yates. Uh, Doug Yates. Uh, he, he just asked me how fast we're going to run, and I, and I, you know, he's the one that tunes on the motors, and he tells me how fast we, we're going to run every time we go out, and that's why we run. So He's, he's been man. telling Ernie Irvin and Dale Jarrett that for years and been right. So, Doug, give us a prediction. Can you beat a 48.336? I don't know. It's going to be tough. I mean, we're, you know, the main reason why we're here is to get laps for Kenny and learn how to draft, and um, just we'll see how qualifying comes out, and hopefully – Hopefully we have a shot at it. Quickly, prediction, Duke, Carolina. Uh, Carolina. I like Carolina this year. All those states coming. States coming. Oh, man. <laughs> How about that Wolfpack? Huh? They're coming, but they don't play tonight. On the deuce, 9 o'clock, Duke and Carolina. It's a clean sweep for North Carolina from the Yates team. Let's check in with Bill Weber. Only a lawyer can go 183 miles an hour in this town and not get a ticket. You're, pretty, you're smiling, but you wanted a little more, didn't you? Yeah, um, you always want a little more. Uh, it would have been great to to be on the pole, but uh, only one can do that. But I think we did we did a good job. Uh, everything felt fine. And, uh, again, I, I think we're fourth right now. We said they said, but uh, we just want to be at least top ten. And then what's going to happen Sunday? Well, we'll worry about that then. <laughs> okay, we're going to smile now, huh? All right. Good luck. Thanks. Tom Bigelow is on the racetrack. Uh, you saw the run by Ted Smokestat, 11th quickest, best lap, 173.802 of 51.783. Tom Bigelow's best lap, well, it hasn't been all that impressive. It was earlier today in the morning session, 162.042, and as he told us, he's having injury trouble. Well, anytime you put a restrict plate on it, that's the, that's the complaint that all the drivers have is it just will not turn loose, just won't run free. The restrictor plates just choke the things down so much and the bodies are forcing, pushing so much air and you don't have any horsepower to push that car through the wind. Very frustrating thing. Big look completes his first lap. Mm -hmm. Not good, 55, 727, average speed, 161.502. Currently is 17th of the 18 cars that are qualified. That's that's not going to get them in the show there, Benny. They're going to have to hope for that if that engine change will give them a little more power. 
And you really wish that he could make the race because he said yesterday that this is one place that he always wanted to race and at 58 years of age, he's still trying and it would be nice to see him fulfill the dream of racing here. And you see that his car is probably an old car because it's not squatting in the rear like the other cars. It's maintaining that static bounce it had to begin with. And you've got to get that rear end down, get the rear spoiler out of the ground, out of the air, I should say, not the ground, out of the air. Well, and that's a Lumina body on this race car right there, folks, which you haven't seen many of those around for a while because of the, the newer style Monte Carlo, and they definitely push more air. Well, he's still 17th out of 18, but he did go faster on that second lap. It was 55.205 and a 163.029. And rolling onto the racetrack is the guy that we talked with a few minutes ago who said he may have a surprise for people. Bobby Gerhardt from Lebanon, Pennsylvania. What is this, the Kowadin? Is that the way you pronounce Kowadin, it? Kowadin, yes. Yep. In the casino up in Michigan. Normally we see Bobby Gerhardt in the number 85 car, a black and white car. Over the years, he's always driven that same thing. But man, when the sponsorship came, they said, we kind of like purple. He said, I love purple. That'll be great. <laughs> to put on there on my number five car and they're going to run the entire season he and russell landrum are, have teamed up so they will make sure that they're at everything in practice he ran 185 point in the practice before qualifying began and here he is taking the green flag and beginning the five mile run well, bob we talked about this yesterday but this particular race car really has an interesting heritage because this is one of the first generation Hendrick cars. Jeff Gordon drove this race car. It's one of the first ones that they built entirely in their shop. And Bobby got a hold of it and he said, man, this thing drives like nothing I've ever been in. He said, no one run of the lines you would expect him to run with an idea of sitting on the pole. He ran the, in the middle of the racetrack down in one and two. And looks like he's going to drive in the middle of the racetrack up in three and four, maybe. But he just might be trying to get the car up to speed. And the next lap, he'll go to the very bottom of the racetrack where Bill Baird, who's currently on the pole at 186.197. The speed he ran was right on the bottom of the racetrack. Let's see. First lap complete. He becomes our 19th qualifier of the afternoon. How did he do on lap one? Good, but not good enough. Not good enough. Now he's on the bottom of the racetrack where you'd expect him to be, and we see the cars bottoming out. He's really going for it now, but he's got to pick up more than a half second with a line around the racetrack. Is that going to change that much? We'll see. Remember, he ran about a lane or a lane and a half off the bottom stripe and turns three and four last time. Let's see where he goes this time. Still about there. Yeah, he's, he's a little bit lower than he was before, but not on that white line like Bill Baird. And that, obviously, the lower you can go to the bottom of the racetrack, the faster it is around the racetrack because you're making the racetrack shorter. Now, this time, you'll go through the problem right on the bottom. This will be faster, much faster, but... Uh, it's close, but no cigar. He's second quick. 48.590, 185.229. Miles per hour. And that's the best qualifying run Bobby Gerhardt's been able to pull off on a super speedway if he's able to hold on and stay second fast here at Daytona. 19 qualifiers so far. Bill Bear, the fastest, back after these messages. Stay with us. Bob Jenkins, Benny Parsons, Bill Weber, Jerry Punch, and our good friend Ray Dunlap up here in the booth as we cover ARCA qualifying for you. Gary Weinbrower from Brook Park, Ohio is on the racetrack. He has completed his first of two laps. It is 12th fastest. Mm, 51.731. Average speed 173.977. That's Bob Shack working on that car. It's one of Shaq's cars. You'd think that would car would run much better than that. It's in 12 spots so far, and I don't think that's going to make the top 125. That might not make the top 136. Top 36, I should say. Again, we've got a lot of qualifiers yet to go. Before too long, Kenny Irwin will be on the racetrack. Two more, and then Kenny. He was fastest in the practice both this morning and early afternoon before the cars came on to the trioval for qualifying. Here's the second lap for Gary Weinbrower. He was 12th fastest on the first lap, and the second lap keeps him in that position, but he did go faster. He did pick it up to 51.433, 174.985 miles per hour. 
12th out of the 20 cars that have qualified so far. And ESPN presents the 6th Annual ESPY Awards Monday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time live from Radio City Music Hall. 35 categories cover the best sports performances including the Arthur Ashe Award for Courage to be presented to Dean Smith. The 1998 ESPY Awards Monday 8 o'clock only on ESPN. Speaking of awards, we yes. see Kenny Irwin getting ready to go qualify. Speaking of awards, did you see that Jeff Gordon was nominated for an award this past Sunday, the Inspirational Award. Oh, really? A sports figure that's an inspirational thing. Hmm. Reggie White was the winner of that award. Okay. There is Kenny Irwin. He is strapped in the machine and ready to go. Meanwhile, Bill Weber is with Bobby Gerhardt. Okay. So what did you have up your sleeve? Well, I guess it wasn't enough, but it was pretty good. Uh, we ran that this morning, kind of quiet. Nobody really saw it. And uh, we thought we left a little bit on the table. Uh, I don't really know that we, we hit the motor quite right or we probably, would have, we probably gave up the pole, but we're real happy with it. We didn't gamble too hard. I was going to ask, are you happy or are you disappointed? A little of both. No, I'm very happy. To come here and, and be that quick, you got to be happy. Okay, the big roll is Sunday, right? You betcha. Good luck. Thank you. John Kinder out of Santa Ana, California, driver we saw in winter heat, the 08 on the racetrack. Also a former uh, NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series driver, wasn't he? Mm, yes, he has yeah. some Craftsman Truck Series. He drove at Suzuka, too, in the That's uh, right. race yep. over there. Yep. He's about to complete his first qualifying run. First lap for John Kinder from Santa Ana, California, in the multimedia graphic Chevrolet is 15th quick, 52. 0.190 seconds and a speed of 172.447. I talked to John this morning. He said he wasn't very happy with the speed of his car, and I can see why, because he's really got to pick it up probably a second, second and a half to make the top 36 to be in Sunday's race, because he does not have any provisionals to fall back on. He's got to get in through speed. Finished eighth in the Winston West points in 1997. So if this was a Winston West race, he'd be pretty good shape, but it's not. So he's hoping to go a little faster. He will become our 22nd qualifier. So only three more and we'll have the top 25 locked in. And then we will begin bumping again. Only the top 25 today in first round qualifying are locked into their position. Checkered flag comes out for John Kinder and the second lap was faster. It was faster. 51.892, 173.437 miles per hour. Picked it up almost one mile per hour exactly. You see the steam coming out of that car as he shuts the engine off. Currently 14th. Well, we have uh, Kenny Irwin, the fastest in practice, coming up in just a moment. We'll take another break and have his qualifying run in just a moment from Daytona International Speedway. It's February, and that means that ESPN Speed World is on hand at Daytona International Speedway for coverage of Speed Weeks. Today, our qualifying, here's how we stand so far. There have been a total of 22 qualifiers. Here's the top 15. Bill Baird is at the top of the list, as he was yesterday after the first round of practice. His speed today, 186.197. There are the 21 that have qualified so far, and on the racetrack right now is Ed Curtis, and he has run a 51-523, a 174-697, and that's 13th quick so far. Like me, you transpose numbers just like I do. Six, seven, nine. Oh. And this completes his second lap. Let's see, 51.365, average speed 175.217, currently at the 11th spot. That might, that'll probably be about what it's going to take to be the top 36. And guys, you notice the front of that race car says Grand Prix on it. It's now a Pontiac. That very same car was a Monte Carlo last at, uh, in the last race last year down in Atlanta. And those boys have been really working hard the last three weeks. They have just been up all night and all day trying to get ready to get down here to Daytona and get in this first plus financial 200. Storming out of turn number two and down the back stretch is Kenny Irwin, the fastest in practice today. And of course, the driver of Robert Yates. Winston Cup car when we get to that series later in the week. Doctor? 
And what he is driving today, Bob, is a Ray Bestus Thunderbird. If you're wondering why it isn't a Taurus, you think, well, Robert Yates could afford a Taurus for ARCA, but the real rule is there are no Tauruses allowed in ARCA right now. He leaves the green flag to come by on his first of two consecutive qualifying laps. ARCA has decided that because of the limited amount of sheet metal and the fact that the Winston Cup teams and the Bush teams are trying to get Tauruses built, it wouldn't be fair to legalize a Taurus. Only a couple of cars, drivers would actually have Tauruses. That's why this guy's driver, Doug Yates, we're talking about, the son of Robert Yates, watching his driver, Kenny Irwin, qualify, hoping to see if he can put it on the pole. And they know from watching him come by, even on the warm-up lap, he's going to have a very, very good first lap and probably even a better second. Former open wheel champion from the United States Auto Club, graduating to the Winston Cup ranks in 1998, but running the ARCA race also on Sunday. Here's the completion of lap number one. We'll know in a minute if it's good enough for the pole. The shooting, the goal is 186-197 by Baird. Did he do it? Uh, not quite. That's the fastest first lap we've seen, though, guys. 185.586 on the first lap. He sure got a good shot at doing it here on the second one. In seconds, 48.495. And Baird's lap was 3.36, so he's got to pick up, oh, about 15 hundredths, 17 hundredths of a second to do it. Doug looks a little nervous up there in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> here comes Kenny Irwin. Enough, certainly not moving the wheel back and forth. Very, very steady with the steering wheel. It's going to be very, very close. Did he do it? Did he do it? Yeah. Yeah. No! Oh. Oh. oh, it was close. He's still second. He went faster on lap two, but it's still second quick. 48, 375, 186, 047, Doc. Well, he was quicker second time by, Doug. He was very, very close. He picked it up, but just quite, not quite enough. Yeah, well, you know, our goal was to come down here and just um, get some drafting experience and uh, got a good starting position, so we'll see what we can do. Maybe it's an omen. Outside front row here and outside front row on Saturday. I hope so. <laughs> Let's see. Thank you. All right, Doug Yates, Robert Yates' son, excited about the fact that they're going to get this car in the field up front and get what they want, most importantly, is drafting experience. And on the racetrack is the black number three, a former crew chief for Dale Earnhardt, Kirk Shelmerdine from Welcome, North Carolina. And he's looking for his second career pole in ARCA competition. He finished third, his best finish last year at Charlotte. You know, Bob, we saw the Lumina out there on the racetrack with the one that Tom Bigelow was driving. And Jerry talked a little bit about the ARCA officials deciding not to let the Taurus in. I think that was a really good move. When you look back through the cars that are legal in the ARCA Bondo Marheit series, you have Dodge Avengers, Buick Regals. There's quite a variety of cars here. But if the guys weren't able to get the Tauruses to run fast, then I think that was the right move for them to not bring that car in this year. Now, Chelmerdine do BP. Pretty good lap. Eighth the first time by, 49.662. Average speed, 181.225. And as I said, moved him in that eighth spot and still got a lap to go. If he picks it up about three-tenths, gets up in the 182 range, could move up, move up six, seven. Well, he ran a 49.43 this morning in practice, a 182.061. So if he indeed can uh, duplicate that, he will move it up a couple of positions. Here's Shelmerdine coming out of turn number four. This will be the 25th car to qualify. And today we're taking the top 25, the fastest 25 cars. So all cars after this, the we'll bumping process will start. The first car to be bumped will be the 82 car. Neil Cunningham and second lap for Shelmerdine. He picked it up just a little bit. Well, about two tenths of a second. 49.435 average speed 182.057 still in eighth spot. We'll talk to Kenny Irwin when we come back to Daytona International Speedway. 25 cars have qualified. The bumping is about to begin. Back at Daytona, where Randall Ritter has just completed his qualifying run, becoming the 25th qualifier of the session. And his two laps were 50.553 and 50.406. Best lap, 178.550. Bill Weber is with the guy who right now is on the outside of row one. And the technical term would be close. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, I mean, like, we run good. We just, you know, didn't run good enough, as they say. But, um, you know, we're here to, to race and, and to get some drafting experience and just to get more time at, um, at Daytona. So that's our whole reason for being here. So two uneventful laps, although very fast. Yeah, I mean, running here, it's it's really totally different than anything. You just go out there and it's just, just like making laps. You're, um, I mean, you don't... I, I've never raced here, so I don't know what race setup is, but it, um, it it doesn't seem that much different right now from what we've been doing all winter. You're about to find out. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, veteran on the track, and Dr. Jerry Punch is with one of the young guys we were following this week. Indeed, Bill, we continue our saga of second-generation drivers. 19-year-old Adam Larson we talked to yesterday following in his dad's footsteps. Adam, uh, you missed the second practice this morning. This afternoon, you had the first one this morning. Was there a problem with the car? No, we, uh, we went for the first set of practice and we put these different shocks on and uh, I don't know if I really liked them or not, but we come back in and we had a lot of things to do before we got ready to qualify, things to change around, shocks and, and windows and different things, so we used that time to get the car ready for qualifying. You look amazingly composed and relaxed here. This is Daytona, your first time to qualify. Are you turning inside or are you really pretty easy about what's going to happen here? Well, it's a lot of hype and I think my dad said, you know, qualifying, they make it such a big deal, but it's, it's really the easiest part of the, the week. So I'm just trying to keep it cool and keep a low profile just so that it, it keeps myself calm and, and I can concentrate on what I need to do. Mike Wallace clocking in ninth as uh, Ron Barfield goes out in the car number two. That's the uh, Ricky Craven on machine. Let me ask you, in practice you were 36 quick as they take 36 in qualifying. Is there any more left in the car? You clocked at a 52-37. Can you beat that in qualifying, Adam? I think there's a lot left in the car and there's a lot more left in me because I was a lot... Um, I'm not quite up to where I need to be right now. I'm not as smooth as I need to be. I haven't had enough laps. A lot of guys have gone around and said, you know, hey, you need to, you're cutting the corners off a little bit. You need to swing out a little higher and, and keep that car straight. And I guess I really wasn't concentrating on keeping that wheel straight. That's the most important thing is to keep the wheel straight, they say. So um, I want to go out there and qualify and see if I can pull a good lap. And, and uh, I'm sure we can pick up a lot. Hey, good luck to you. Thank you, Mary. Adam, Adam Larson, a very mature young man for his year. How did Ron Barfield do, guys? Apparently in eighth spot, first lap, 49-421, 182-109. And you said Mike Wallace uh, was ninth, is now moved back to the 10th spot. And Mike Wallace's fast lap was 49.24. You know, we talked about the top, we talked top of the show, Benny, about how qualifying's really not that important if you get in the top 15 because the race takes a long time to fold out. But if Mike Wallace in that six car continues to run 180 miles an hour and the pole winner and the outside pole winner run 186 in the race, he's not going to have a shot at it. No. He'll come by in the New Holland Monte Carlo. Completes his qualifying run at 49.298. Average speed 182.563. Jumped up one more spot to seventh. And that was a 49.74 that Mike Wallace ran, not a 49.74. And Neil Cunningham, the car number 82, and the number eight car of Tom Bigelow have been bumped out of the top 25. 27 cars have qualified so far. And David Hall is on the bubble in the nine car as Ed Barrier in the 90 car goes by, starts his qualifying run. Now well, let's see, Ed Barrier today ran a 181.873 as his best practice lap. So we'll see if he can uh, duplicate that. If he can, he'll move up into the top 10 at the moment. In yesterday's practice show, one of the guys talked to him down in the garage and said, how's things going, Ed? He said, we're junk. We're going to change everything <laughs> on the car. So hopefully they've found something that gives them a little more speed. This is the Mean Green Hand Cleaner AccuTurn Ford. AccuTurn is a brake lathe. lathe you turn rotors and drums to smooth them out so that your brakes would be better. On as the bubble is David Hall, as you said. Did he get bumped? Yes, yes. he did get bumped. Uh, Barrier's first lap, as you see on their pylon, puts him in 11th spot. 49.950, Now on the bubble is the four car of David Bobbs. Yep. So qualifying is uh, picking up here as the pace is quickened a little bit. And Ed Barrier on the back stretch. We still have a lot of good cars to qualify, including Andy Hillenberg, the defending race winner. 
Blaze Alexander is warming up his car right now. And so don't go away because we got lots more action to go. And it's uh, very possible that Bill Baird can be knocked off his provisional pole position. Checkered flag comes out and Barrier completes the run and moving, moves up one position. He picked up a little bit, Bob. He moved his speed up to 181.178 miles an hour. That's a time of 49. Point six seven five. We'll review the uh, top 25 in terms of speed, and right now they vary from 170.6 to 186.197. And there you see Baird on the top and David Boggs on the very bottom and all these cars in between. As Is this the Blaze Alexander automobile? Mm -hmm. Yep. Car number 20. We talked with Blaze yesterday. This is the car that needed the crease down the side, wasn't it? And they put a piece of aluminum down the side of the car, pop riveted a piece of aluminum down the side of the car to take the place of the crease. And they painted over it, as a matter of fact. So it's not black like it was when I first saw it a moment ago. Hey, these guys have been working very hard. Blaze ran a 180 point. Actually, the paint didn't have matching paint, so they found some nice yellow tape and put tape over the side of Blaze Alexander's race camp machine. In fact, once they did it, one of the aerodynamics guys came over from the Winston Cup garage and said, you don't realize this, guys, but you just helped your race car. That little dimple, that little uh, along the side of that Chevrolet Monte Carlo helps funnel the air down the side of the car and makes it stay truer in the corner. So they were told to do it by ARC officials, and whatever they did must have helped them a little bit. And they went faster than in practice, too. Bob. Yep. David Boggs has been bumped out of the top 25 as Blaze Alexander records the 11th quickest lap so far. And now, as we see on the pylon, Jim Hurlburt is on the bubble. Alexander 49, 712, 181, 043 miles per hour. Another lap to go. Should move it up maybe to 182. Can he squeeze 182 out of that baby? Let's see. Montoursville, Pennsylvania driver on his second lap. Yeah, moves it up to ninth quick. Good run. 49-430, 182.076. Bill Weber is with one of the other guys we've been keeping an eye on. We talked to Adam Larson a few minutes ago. Now we'll talk to Billy Venturini. And Bob, two hours ago when we began our broadcast, we talked about how Billy Venturini is scheduled to go out 64th of the 65 cars. Well, he was eighth in practice this morning. I would thought you'd be nice and nervous, but we had to go get somebody to get you out of the lounge because you were just like relaxing. How do you feel? Well, we got about another hour to go before I'm going to get to qualify. Just uh, don't want to get all tensed and worked up until it's time to go, you know, and then, then if you get a little bit emotional and get a little bit nervous or excited, that's fine. But if I start getting nervous now, it's going to be a long hour. <laughs> another young talent, Jimmy Kitchens, out on the racetrack right now as we speak to Billy Venturini. This can be one of the longest days of your life if you draw a late number in qualifying. Well, I'm kind of excited about the late number. I think it might be my, my trump card, kind of. You know, uh, I think it might get a little cooler and the wind's kind of dying down. It was, it was blowing hard when the first few guys went. You know, it really looks like I'm looking at the times and I think we can get the top five. You're gonna settle for a top five after yesterday you told us you came here to win the race? You don't have to start on a pole to win the race. Okay, so you'll be happy with a top five. If we can get a top five, I'd be real happy. If we start inside top ten, we'll be we'll be set we'll settle for that. We we'll really like a top five. Uh, like I said, you know, if you're in top ten, you still win the race. All right, good luck, Billy. Thank you. He's not even changed into his driving suit yet, so you can see he's still got a long way ahead of him. Kitchen's still on the track, guys. Yeah, Jim Hurlbert has been bumped. Jimmy Kitchens is fifth fastest on his first lap. Let's see what happens on lap number two. Can he pick it up? First lap, 48-820. Second lap, no, he slowed down just a little bit. 48, 847, average speed 184, 249. So his first lap, first lap was the fastest. When he came off turn four, Benny, I noticed he did just a little bit of a move with the steering wheel there and a kind of a bobble might have been an air thing out there. Whatever happened, it did slow him down. Here's Josh Baltus from Dayton, Ohio, the grandson of Earl Baltus, who owns the famous dirt track in West Central Ohio, Eldora. Talked to Josh the other night when he got into town. He said, you know, I got a whole new outlook for 1998. He said, last year I raced all the time and I was still trying to go to college and I had all this homework to do and all this stuff. He said, now that I'm out of school, he said, I think I'm going to enjoy this a whole lot more. He's 
still, uh, still got a lot of homework to do trying to figure out how to beat these guys on the racetrack. It's going to take about all he can do. But again, just 23 years old, I think, Josh Baltus. Norm Benning, by the way, is on the bubble. He's 25th fastest at the moment. Let's see if Josh Baltus can knock him off. Josh graduated from Ohio State, excuse me, Bob, and uh, has a degree in reality. 181.116 in the morning practice session. He's in the top 25. 49.990, 180.036 miles per hour. And still with about a half a lap to go on his second circle around the two and a half mile trioval at Daytona. See on the top of her car, he'll be carrying one of our onboard cameras here Sunday afternoon from the first plus financial 200. And there you can also see the top 25 as they stand right now with the 53 car of Bob Kelly on the bubble at the moment. Here's the completion of the qualifying run for Josh Baltus. 180.036 was his first lap, and lap number two is. Well, it's a little bit faster, 49.815, 180.668 miles per hour, still 14th fastest. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll be bringing you up to date on a driver who had some pr trouble during the practice session earlier today. That when we return to Daytona. First round ARCA qualifying continuing here at Daytona International Speedway. The checkered flag is waving for Brian Cons from Livonia, Michigan. His first lap just barely got him into the top 25. He's 23rd quickest. His second lap was fastest, but still keeps him in the 23rd fastest position. A 51.537, a lap of 174.632 was the best for Brian Cons. Down, down to Bill now. Weber. All right, let's go to Jerry Punch. All right, one of us will talk. We'll be happy to. Bill and I both will take turns. We're teamed out here. Let me just tell you, the next guy who was scheduled to qualify was the car number 19, Naples, Florida, real estate agent Kevin Counselor in the Cooper and All Chevrolet. Unfortunately, this morning, in fact, uh, fortunately, it's the only incident we've had in ARCA thus far. Counselor had a problem coming off turn two and pancaked the outside wall with the right side of his Chevrolet. That car has been taken now back to the ARCA garage area, and we are told that Kevin Counselor has been taken to Halifax Hospital for some x-rays and a checkup, looking at a possible broken rib or two and x-raying his right shoulder. Any further updates? We'll pass it along before we go off the air. Looks like he hit pretty hard there on the right side of the car. Yes, he hit awfully hard. I saw the frame rail when I walked by there today, and it was pushed in pretty doggone well. On the track is the 49 car of Joel White from Royce City, Texas, the J.B. Weld Chevrolet. First lap was 50.269, 179.037, currently in 15 spots. So the, the Bob Kelly car has been bumped. Also, John Kinder has been bumped. And now on the bump is the 25 car of Ted Smokestad. You know, guys, for years and years, what most of the drivers would do would be walk over to the Winston Cup garage and say to a guy, hey, are, are you going to be selling any of your old cars? I'd like to buy one so maybe I can go ARCA racing. Well, in this field for this race, you'll find about a dozen cars that were built from the ground up as an ARCA Super Speedway car, and this is one of those cars. It was built by Hutcherson Pegg in a brand new unit for Joel White and his new sponsor, J.B. Weld, and that race car, he said, handles just about as good as anything he's ever been in. 15 so far, 49.965, 180.126. Good lap for Joel White. So now moving to the bubble is Ted Smokestat, and the man on the racetrack is uh, driving car number seven. This is Scott Baker from Holland, Michigan, and the Boeing Machine ANA Manufacturing 98 Monte Carlo. Baker ran a couple of races last year. We saw his best finish was a fifth. And Bill Weber is with Jimmy Kitchens. Yeah, we were just having a little conversation before when you tried to throw it down to us. But Jimmy, <laughs> uh, you're pretty happy with that fifth so far. Yeah, I really am. Uh, we practiced pretty good here yesterday and this morning. The car felt really good and 
We slowed down a little bit on our second lap. The car got a little push in it, but hey, we're tickled to death. This Casey Racing Ford has been running really good. Uh, the car owners, Dave and Jim Carroll, have given us a really good race car, and Red Farmer and Caesar and all the guys on the crew, uh, Hammer with the engines. Everybody's done an excellent job. I'm really excited about it. Looking forward to Sunday, big time. Yeah, because you think this car is going to race really well. I feel like it will. I, I honestly don't feel like a race setup is going to be much off of what our qualifying setup was. Uh, the car don't have the raised rails and everything on it, so we ought to race really good, getting a good pack of cars and try to stay up front all day. Okay, we'll be watching. Good luck. Thanks, Bill. We'll see you. Thank you. Scott Baker down the backstretch completing his second lap. You know, yesterday we had Scott Baker running about 180 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. And he said that when, they, when we interviewed him that the folks in the pit crew had, had uh, clocked him around 52 seconds flat, which was totally wrong from what we did. But guess what? Scott Baker was right <laughs> because his first lap was 52.534, 171.318, which that's the only second lap. The scoring monitor came up yesterday showing us that his lap was 182.072. His best lap today was 174.486. And again, I would think that uh, speed today was more reasonable because his second lap, although it was better, still is only 28th fastest. That's correct. 172.559 miles per hour for Baker. And guys, we talk about the different kind of cars people bring to the speedways. This again is one of those cars that's for an intermediate track, not necessarily built for Daytona or Talladega. Following our coverage of first round ARCA qualifying for the first Plus Financial 400 on Sunday will be Shop Talk. That comes up with your host, Alan Bestwick, immediately following our coverage here at Daytona. ESPN Speed World is live at Daytona International Speedway with continuing coverage of Speed Weeks. Tomorrow, more ARCA, Winston Cup, IROC practice, and practice for those involved in the Bud Shootout. Saturday, we'll have the run for the Bush Pole and NASCAR Winston Cup at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, weather permitting. On Sunday, we'll have live coverage at 11 o'clock of the last chance qualifier for the Bud Shootout. The winner goes to that shootout. And then the ARCA race, the first plus financial 200, is at 1.30 Eastern Time on Sunday afternoon. John Kernan is here every weekday night at 7 o'clock Eastern Time with RPM tonight as we review the activity here at Daytona and anywhere else in the world of motorsports. All right, Kurt Piercy was the most recent to go out and didn't do too well. No, he did, ran 59.755, average speed 150.615, so that would be 35th of uh, the 35 cars that have attempted to qualify so far, and this is Dan Partis from Daytona Beach, Florida That's on the racetrack. Right. The local hero here in Daytona Beach, Dan Partis in the Jim and Julie Gardner Chevrolet. Judy, Judy Gardner. Yes. yes. Jim Bob Gardner. Got some help from Caldwell Banker there on the hood, which is a guy that lives here in Daytona and owns that business. He sold Dan his house and a couple other folks on the team a house, and he said, well, we're going to try to get a commission back from him and see if we can get some sponsorship. <laughs> First lap makes him 16th quick, 50.108, 179.612. Yesterday, he ran a 179.942. Dr. Punch. Well, not that Craig Butts has pressure or anything, but he is driving for James Finch, the car owner who has won the last two consecutive first plus financial 200s here at Daytona. The young man only in his second ever ARCA race. In fact, he's only run one sportsman event. Now, I asked Craig, I said, what do you do? He said, well, I'm a lobbyist. He said, I told the crew I was a lobbyist, and one of the guys said, well, what hotel do you hang around? He said, no, that's not what a lobbyist is. He's a lobbyist in Montgomery, Alabama, who wants to be a race car driver. Hoping to get his qualifying in next, following the conclusion of Danny Partis's run. Okay, and Partis has uh, completed the run with a second lap that's a little faster. He's 16th fastest so far, 49.966, 180.122 miles per hour. We talk about Jim Gardner, one of the owners of the car, mm -hmm. a graduate of Duke University. So and let's see, they play who tonight? Carolina, <laughs> University of North Carolina. But he'll be watching that big game. It's <laughs> 9 o'clock here on the Deuce, folks. Tune in. Big game, big, big, big game. game. <laughs> That's what they tell me. Johnny Spradley is on his way for a qualifying run in the H&H Construction J.C. Strother Chevrolet. Johnny is from Waycross, Georgia, and a rookie contender in ARCA in 1998. 
The race car that he's driving, guys, used to be a Bush Grand National car that Richard Lassiter owned. And some folks may say, well, what's the big deal? Well, a Bush Grand National car has a 105-inch wheelbase, and an ARCA or a Winston Cup car has a 110-inch wheelbase. So you really have to do a lot of work to get a car to come from the Bush Grand National Division over here. This guy says, well, he said, I probably have about 200 hours fixing this car, but he said it's going to be a lot of fun running at Daytona. <laughs> Ken Smokestead has been bumped off. Brian Kahn's is now on the bubble. Spradley did not do that. He's currently 30th, 52.464, 171.546. I don't know whether it's because of the contrast or what, the contrast between the light gray and the black spoiler, but that spoiler looks like it's about three feet high on that car, doesn't it? It really does. And they, on the edges, the spoiler is probably about seven and a quarter, seven and a half inches high, and they got to maintain a 60 degree elevation on the spoiler, so this really is a big wing or parachute on the back of these cars. Well, Johnny Spradley trying to get into the top 25 has a long way to go. Let's see if the second lap is going to do it for him. It uh, will not. He remains in 30th position overall at 52.233. It was faster on lap two, but not good enough. 172.305. Jerry is with Mike Schichetti, who was second quick in the practice this morning. Indeed, Bob, possibly a sleeper in qualifying. Second quickest this morning in practice behind Kenny Irwin and uh, Micah. The combination effort, your team and Stan Hoover's team now for 1998. Wouldn't it be great to put this thing on the front row to begin the season? That's that's what we're shooting for. We've uh, we've been pretty fast all day. Uh, actually, since we got her yesterday, uh, we've we've merged our two efforts together, and uh, I think we're going to have we built the foundation for a real good up and coming team. We're also planning on running the Winston Cup uh, in the 500 if we can make the show, and we're planning on doing that too. Uh, Got to thank Hughes Supply for their backing and uh, Blade Sportswear, Ream Air Conditioning, Heating and Cooling. Uh, Bathcraft, Bath Style, Moen Faucets, American Standard. Uh, it's only an hour show. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a bunch of good sponsors. Uh, Stan's got a bunch of good sponsors. We we uh, also want to mention Cowan Trucking because because we're running both races. I have uh, two trucks down here, and uh, Bob Cowan brought one of his trucks down and hauled all of our Arca stuff down so that we could uh, we could fulfill both uh, both obligations in both garages. So we've actually got two rigs in both in, in each garage. And, uh, couldn't have done that without Bob Cowan and, and his fine efforts. Okay, Mike. Good luck to you in qualifying. Mike Chiquetti Jr., the drive car number 80. He is uh, two cars away from qualifying as we check in with a driver who's already run. Right, Bill? That's right, Doctor. That'd be Dan Parnas from the Team Daytona. As we talked to him yesterday, he was very confident at the end of practice. How do you feel now? Oh, we're pretty happy with it, Bill. Uh, the Jim and Judy Motorsports, uh, Colwell Banker, Major League Realty, Midwest Transit, Pontiac. Uh, we really haven't had much time to work with it. We've really been working hard on our cup program, pro, uh, the cup car, and, uh, you know, we just haven't spent much time with Pontiac, but we're pretty happy with it. We'd like to turn a few tenths better, but it got picked up a tight on me there coming off the four and uh, kind of pushed me up to the wall and scrubbed a little speed there. We'd like to see about two tenths better, but we'll take it. Hopefully we're in the top 20. We can be there at the end like we were last year here at Daytona. Started 23rd here last year and finished ninth, so we're we're, we're pretty happy with it. Okay, good luck. You think about racing. I want to get your car owner in here for just a second. Jim, come over for a second. Hey, hey, there's some kind of basketball game tonight? You, you... I think we got a little game in Chapel Hill tonight, but uh, couldn't get Doc Punch. Uh, he, he's going on my side, but uh, I heard Doug Gates uh, won a little bit of Carolina, so I'll go find Doug Gates. Your car <laughs> looked awfully close to Carolina blue. Is that a Duke blue on there? Is that what that is? That's a Duke blue. Okay, I wasn't that's sure. That's a royal blue. That's, uh, that's, not, that's not sky blue. That's a royal blue. Okay, and that game, of course, is on ESPN2 tonight. We'll watch it. Okay, and it's big because it's subject to blackout, right, BP? Exactly. <laughs> well, uh, Craig Butts did a very, very good job moving up to sixth fastest. 48.827, 184.324 miles per hour. Brian Cons has been bumped, and now Gary Weinbrohr is on the bubble on the 25th spot. And the man trying to knock him off is Bob Strait from Makita, Illinois. Bob had two pole positions last year in ARCA competition. That car really bottoming out in turns one and two. He won the pole at Kilcare and at Salem. First lap was 26 fastest, 51, 521, 174.686. 
He's got to get it up to 176, 177 to be competitive. Got Bowser's car. Zinzer Paints, the sponsor on the number 21 there. And, you know, we talked to Glenn Brewer earlier in the show, and he said, boy, whenever you bottom out that many times, it's just scrubbing off speed. And we saw a lot of sparks coming out from underneath that 21 car. Boy, we sure did. Here's the checkered flag in the completion of the run for Bob Strait, who becomes our 39th qualifier of the afternoon. Let's see where he falls in. Well, he just barely made it. 51.320. 175.370 puts him up in 23rd spot. We'll bump Juan Brewer and put the double zero car of Eckert. The first qualifier yep. is now on the bubble. Rick Eckert was the first out shortly after 2.30 this afternoon, and now he finds himself on the bubble. Still a lot of good qualifiers left to go, and we'll be back for those when we return to Daytona. There's the fountain and Lake Lloyd in the infield here at Daytona International Speedway as ARCA qualifying continues tonight on RPM Tonight. Brett Bodine will be around to talk about the sponsor for 98. Mike Skinner will talk about his defense of the pole position. And Kenny Schrader and Andy Petrie, his crew chief and car owner, will be along. Plus, we'll have the results of the drawing for starting order of the Bud Shootout. Guess who won the pole position? That is at, <laughs> at 7 o'clock tonight. John Kernan, your host. RPM tonight. Mark Martin will start from pole position in the Bud Shootout. On the track is Mike Schichetti, car number 80, Fred Zack, qualified while we were away, didn't make it. He was 32nd at 172.32 miles per hour. And here comes Schichetti. Thinks he's got a shot for the pole. Yesterday, Mike mentioned the Fufui, and I mentioned that, yeah, that's a story from last year. We didn't follow up on that from those, for those people who are new viewers and his uh, Fufui. He's ninth quick, by the way, on the first lap. Quickly, that story, Ray. Well, what it was, Bob, his little boy had a blanket that he took to bed every night, and that's the Fufui. But when Mike got ready to come to Daytona last year, his boy had cut a little corner of it off and handed it to him. He says, Daddy, this will be for good luck. So he taped that up on the dash, and that's... That is one of his good luck. And he still has it in 1998. But he's got to pick up seven-tenths of a second. So obviously, he's not, he will not sit on, I'll go on record to say it, he will not sit on the pole for the first plus financial 200. That is really going out on a limb, folks. Benny yeah. Parsons makes the prediction. And now we'll see if it comes true. What do you think? Huh? By golly, you're right. He moved up one spot. He's now eighth quickest with 48.983, 183.737 for Mike Schichetti. Bill Weber. And Craig Butts is currently sixth. You're pleased with that? Oh, yes. Yes, we're pleased, very pleased with it. We'd rather have been sitting on pole, but we'll take six and get ready for the race tomorrow. And what do you have to do to, uh, by the way, the race, are you going to get ready for the race tomorrow? I was going to say it's not until Sunday, but uh, what are you going to do? We just have to change a few different setup things and... We'll be ready for it. Okay, you got a good car, obviously, so good luck. Yeah, thank you. That's Craig Butts from Montgomery, Alabama. 41 cars have qualified so far for the ARCA 200, the first plus financial race on Sunday. We'll have more when we return. World coverage from Daytona International Speedway. Here's what we've accomplished so far today in qualifying for Sunday's first plus financial 200 ARCA race. Bill Baird on down the list. See Mike Wallace is back in 15th. We'll take a look at 16 through 30. Josh Baldus will start that group. 25 cars all were qualifying today. Ed Curtis is on the bubble. 26 through 30. Rick Eckert and all these cars have been bumped so far. And now the remainder of those cars that have qualified here today. And still a lot more cars. And on the racetrack right now, taking the green flag and beginning the run is car number 48. And that belongs to Jim Lam Lamoureux. Lamoureux, and he decided to drive down the apron of the racetrack <laughs> through the trial over here at the Daytona International Speedway. 
Sweet Valley, Pennsylvania is where Jim Hale's from. See, you look at his name, Lamoro, you think he was some German Irish descent or something. Is that or that kind name. of a name? This kid. <laughs> hmm. Okay, who's on the bubble? It's 73 Ed Curtis right now with a 175 two that are currently the fastest of the day so far. James Hilton is working on this 48 car back in the 70s, one of the Top drivers in NASCAR wins to cup racing. The first lap for Lamoro was 36th. Here he comes down for the checkered flag, and we'll see if he's going to bust that top 25. No, no. He's currently 32nd, 52-042, 172.937 miles per hour. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, Mount Clemens, Michigan driver Rick Shepard is an ARCA veteran, and like many of the ARCA veterans over the years, he has a limited budget, and thus far can't afford to pay his crew. Most of them ask him prior to coming to Daytona, what can I do for him? One of the guys, David Holmes, one of his primary helpers, said, look, I, have, I love Richard Petty. A lot of us are Petty fans. We've always wanted to work on a car that was Petty Blue and Red. And Rick said, it's done. We'll paint the car Petty Blue and Red, the new colors for Daytona, just to be able to salute the efforts of my crew. How about that? And yes. David said, you know what? He says, I'd like to find Richard Petty, see if he'd come over here and maybe sign that car, and then I can cut <laughs> it up and put it in my house. I don't know what his wife's <laughs> going to say about that, but... <laughs> it sounds like a good idea to me. Here's Broadview Heights, Ohio's Kenny Martin on the racetrack, and uh, Martin has just uh, completed lap number one, and he's 19th quick. 50.089, 179.68. That's bump the Kurt in the car 21 is on the bubble. Time to beat 175.370. Although Martin has already done that, that's a problem for the next car. You know, we have a lot of Winston Cup drivers that sit back in their motor homes and, and elsewhere watching our coverage. And uh, if Daryl Waltrip is watching today, happy birthday. It is his, what, 51st birthday, I believe? DW is 51. Man, he's old. <laughs> I hope Not as old it. as <laughs> <laughs> as some of us. Yeah, all right. Okay, checkered flag. Kenny Martin qualifies for Sunday's race. He was 19th, and now he's 17th quick. 49.925, 180.270 miles per hour for Kenny Martin. Adam Larson, the young man that we've been watching, uh, is getting closer to his qualifying run. Dr. Punch is right there. Well, 19-year-old rookie driver Adam Larson looks very, very relaxed in the car, but his 50-year-old father Wayne Larson is a wreck standing outside. Wayne flying at 180 plus. Yeah, I just telling the guys that uh, you know, I'm glad he's in there, but I'd rather be in there because I'd be more relaxed in the car than I am standing out here watching. But uh, I'm real confident in Adam. Uh, he's really, he's pretty calm. He's very calm actually, and we've been coaching him quite a bit about his line, and and I think he'll do just fine. Confident and also very, very proud. Oh, very proud. You bet. <laughs> All right, Wayne Lars, a son following in his father's footsteps, trying to qualify for his first ever ARCA 200 at Daytona International Speedway. Will he qualify? We'll find out in a moment. Welcome back to Daytona, where Rick Shepard is coasting through turn number one after completing his second lap. Bad news for Rick Shepard. I think the car blew up just as he took the checkered flag because on the second lap, he slowed down 1.272, 175.534 miles per hour. Bubble at 25th, but you see how much he slowed down that second lap? That means something happened, and the engine as he went by here sounded very, very flat. Yes, it did. Very flat. So he's on the bubble and out to see if he can uh, get himself into the top 25 would be the 40 car of Andy Belmont. Well, it's 4.30 Eastern time and we welcome you to ESPN's coverage of ARCA qualifying here at Daytona. For those of you who are tuned in to see Shop Talk, it will be coming up right after our coverage of qualifying and it will be seen in its entirety. So stay with us for Shop Talk coming up at the end of qualifying. Andy Belmont from Pendell, Pennsylvania in the America Online 4. His first lap was 50.056, and that's 20th. Just barely, he has bumped the 35 car of Rick Shepard. And now Gary Layton in the 74 car is on the bubble at 176 and a half miles per hour. Standing by with Kenny Martin is Bill Weber. 
Well, we'll see if we can get Kenny Martin to smile. You're in the top 20. You're gonna you're gonna be all right. Well, it's not quite what we expected, but uh, we'll be there for the race. That's an important thing. And we got a place to start, and that's basically what qualifying is. What were you expecting? Well, we were hoping to get closer to the front in case there's any kind of wrecks. We could kind of stay out of trouble, you know, but we'll work our way up there and do the best we can. Okay, and then you'll smile for us. Promise? I'll give you a smile tomorrow, or Sunday, rather. Okay. Andy Belmont taking the checkered flag. 17th, I think. Is that correct? That's You're right, Bill. Mm -hmm. 49, 848, 180.549 miles per hour. Andy Belmont's got a good bit of experience here at Daytona, guys. He ran the Goodies Dash Series here for quite a while. Actually had a pole here at Daytona, but this car, America Online car, he's got here for the Arca Bondo Marheide Series. Not quite fast enough for the pole, but he's solidly in the show. And on the racetrack is the number 88 car of Donnie Moran. And you talk about a guy whose name is synonymous with uh, dirt late model racing. you got to mention this guy. He is uh, a very big talent in in the Midwest uh, where he normally runs. He's from Dresden, Ohio. But uh, on the pavement now, we'll see what Donnie is able to do here at Daytona. Talking, speaking of big, boy, we got a big basketball game tonight. Is that right? I heard about that. that. Who's playing? The University of North Carolina Tar Heels, number two in the nation, mm -hmm. versus about, I don't know, 15 miles apart. So I would say there's probably a significant rivalry there, isn't there? Yes, there is. <laughs> First fastest with a 50.193, a 179.308. And that puts the 99 car, Jeff Finley, on the bubble. You know how I know it's a big game? How? Because they got it blacked out in North and South Carolina. See where it says right down there? Subject to blackout. Huh. I'll be darned. Six o'clock, I mean nine o'clock tonight, Eastern time, six on the West Coast. Checkered flag is out for Donnie Moran as he comes down through the tri-oval. And we'll see if he was able to pick up his speed a little bit. Very similar times. Yeah, he did go a little faster. Went up to 180 miles an hour. Two tenths of a second faster. 49.958. 180.151 miles per hour. And Frank Kimmel is on the racetrack at the moment in the number 46 machine. Frank Kimmel from Jeffersonville, Indiana. Uh, Kimmel has not done all that well in uh, practice so far, has he? he this, the, today was his best speed in terms of practice, 182.256. And they... I talked to Frank, talked to Larry Clement, the owner and crew chief, and they really feel like that the body, what's he doing down there? Oh, he's trying to draft off that slower car up there. Probably just completed qualifying. Donnie Moran was slow on, on the apron of the racetrack, so Kimmel was down there trying to get a little draft off that car. But they feel like their body is really hurting them because they have the same engine builder performance technology that's built the engine for Bill Baird. And you see, that's the folks, if you don't understand, that's the 52 car up on the very top of the pile on the pole setter so far. Okay, let's see what uh, Frank Kimmel was able to do. He just took the green flag. Didn't know he, that was a completion of the first lap. 14th quickest, 49, 481, 181.888. It's a good solid time, no question about it, but I know this crew is definitely disappointed with that because they feel they could be a contender on about any of the racetracks throughout the season, maybe not here at the tournament. Jeff Finley has been bumped, and now Russell Landrum is on the bubble. The time to beat, as you see, 177.718. I thought that 177 would make the top 125, so I don't think it's going to. It's probably going to be up mm -hmm. to 170 mile per hour range. Yep, here's a checkered flag for Frank Kimmel in the Advanced Auto Parts Visionaire Chevy Monte Carlo. And the second lap puts him up to 10th quick. So he, he also moved up two tenths of a second that lap, 49.269, a 182.671. Boy, can you imagine what's going through the mind of the young 19-year-old Adam Larson. He is waiting to go out and try to qualify for Sunday's ARCA 200 at Daytona International. Back for that in a moment. The scene is Daytona International Speedway. It's qualifying for Sunday's ARCA race. Coming up next, at the conclusion of about eight more cars, we'll have shop talk for you in its entirety up next after qualifying. Drew White is on the racetrack. First lap was not very good, a 55.962, a 160. 
0.823 miles an hour. This uh, is another native Floridian. He hails from Yankee Town, Florida. And Bill Weber is with Donnie Moran. Who's a relatively new name to, uh, well, to uh, Super Speedway fans, but tell the fans a little bit about yourself. you got a strong racing background. Oh, yeah, I've raced on dirt tracks for uh, approximately 19 years. Uh, we're coming down here today, Tony, to drive the KM Motorsports race car. Uh, we've run Eldora. Uh, we've run Talladega before on our asphalt, run some arc about six years ago. Uh, we're pretty interested to try to qualify here to Daytona and uh, see how it turns out. Okay, best of luck to you. Thank you. Back upstairs. On the racetrack now is Adam Larson. We've been following this 19-year-old kid. And there's not, in practice so far, the speeds have not been good enough to get in the race. Can he pick it up? We'll see. 173.648 was his best, and that came yesterday during the uh, strong winds that we had. Drew White, by the way, was a little faster on lap number two, but uh, he did not improve in terms of position. He is still 47th fastest, and so remaining on the bubble is the 85 car of Russell Landrum. Now this is the first lap. Hopefully he's just running that first lap up high to get his car up to speed and the next time he will go down to the bottom of the racetrack because on the bottom is definitely a little bit faster. First lap is completed for Adam Larson. How did he do? 33rd so far, 151. 525. There he's down on the bottom of the racetrack. Got a boy. 174. 672. Look at dad there in the box. That's his father, Wayne Larson from Ames, Iowa, and he's pretty happy. He said, boy, this, this kid's paying attention to what we told him. This has been his fastest lap so far, but he still, he still needs to pick it up maybe one mile per hour because right now, 33rd, they're only going to take 36 cars through qualifying. He will need to get in with a speed, not a provisional. Well, he isn't down on the bottom of the racetrack as he should have been, about a lane higher. And here is the checkered flag waving for 19-year-old Adam Larson with a reminder again that Shop Talk will come up right after we conclude qualifying here at Daytona. Second lap, did he get to the top 25? Wow, picked it up almost a mile and a half per hour, 51.111. 176.070, 28th so far. Jerry Punch. Well, his dad is talking to him right now, telling him let the motor turn over and cool itself down, and, his, and Adam is talking back to his dad. I'm not sure they told him what he ran yet, but he's dropping. That's the fastest we've been all uh, since practice, 51-1. You must have cut a pretty good line. He did, Jerry, ran a very good line. He says, I can't hardly keep my foot on the floor. It's shaking so much. <laughs> <laughs> How about it, Dad? you got to be awfully proud. What were you worried about? Uh, really, I just worried about cutting a good lap. I knew he'd do a good job. He just He's, he's, <laughs> he's a good kid. He's uh, got a good head on his shoulders. I knew he wouldn't do anything stupid, and he's been thinking. He's been picking up all the things everybody's been telling him all day long to do. And I'm sure he just sorted all those things out and picked out the ones that he wanted to use, and that's what he did. How about going back and give that boy a hug? Uh, you bet. Thank you. All right, Wayne Larson going to talk to his young son, and he'll come in and talk to Bill Weber in just a moment. Let's check in with Bill. And I'm with Frank Kimmel, who's also very happy. You picked it up a little bit and currently 10th, and you're thrilled with that. Yeah, I really are. Uh, we wanted to make the top 10. I don't think we'll quite end up there, but... Uh, We've been struggling all week, so we hopefully uh, get that Chevrolet running a little bit better. And you said it's not one big thing, it's what? <laughs> About a thousand little ones, I think. Uh, but I'll tell you what, the Advanced Auto Parts crew really worked hard. We've changed a lot on the body the last uh, couple hours, and uh, so I think we made big improvements. I think we can keep going. Okay, we'll be watching. Good luck. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's Frank Kimmel, who really picked it up here in qualifying. Greenville, South Carolina's Chad Coleman will not get into the field unless he improves significantly on lap number two. Yeah, first lap was 52, 6-2-0, 171.038. You saw that graphic just a moment ago would be the 48th fastest car as he comes by and completes his qualifying run. He needs to pick it up. 
about seven, and he sl actually slowed down a second lap, so 44th would be his lap record. Bob, when we look at the speed charts here, we see Bill Baird on the pole at 186.197 miles an hour. That's an unbelievable time, but there's one guy, one guy that might be able to beat him still sitting in line. He'll go next, and that's Andy Hillenburg. The defending champion of the race here at Daytona. Reminder that Shop Talk is coming up next here on ESPN2, right after we conclude our coverage of qualifying. There's young Adam Larson climbing out after giving the car a good run and qualifying 28th on the day. We're back at Daytona. We've gone over our schedule uh, off air time. We're supposed to be off at 4.30 Eastern time, but we're going to stay here right through the final qualifier, and then you'll be able to see in its entirety Shop Talk. On the racetrack is Billy Mizell from Frankston, Texas, and the first lap was 47th quickest. The second lap is same. Yeah, a little faster, but uh, still 47th quick. There you see his two laps. The second lap was fastest, 52, 769 average speed, 170.555 miles per hour. Bill Weber. And these are now famous feet belonging to Adam Larson. Were they really shaking that bad? Oh, you know, and I, I, can't, I couldn't believe I went out there. I was shaking. My heart was thumping. I couldn't even believe it's the first time I've ever time trialed anything. So uh, I was nervous. I don't know how nervous Dad was, but boy, I was nervous. He was a little nervous, too. Now, you told me before qualifying that Mike Wallace saw you on the racetrack and then gave you some pointers after you guys came in. Did that help? It helped tremendously. He was about a straightaway behind, and he saw that I was going into the corners a little low, and I wasn't coming out to the walls right away after the, out of the corners. And, and he says, you're cutting the corners off. And he says, you can't do that at this place. So he said, uh, you know, stay up a little higher on the straightaways and then swing down into the corners. And, and uh, he says, keep that thing just, just cocked just like that and keep it like that. Don't turn it anymore. If it wants to go up the hill, let it go up the hill. He says, and that helped tremendously. I mean, as you can see, the times are a lot better. Veteran Andy Hillenberg on the racetrack right now. Will you stand on that time, or do you think you'll try it again? I'm pretty sure we're going to stand on that time. Um, I don't know where we're at right now. It depends, but uh, if we can pick up something tomorrow in practice that's significant, then we might try to re-qualify. But usually we stand on the time. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Okay, that's one youngster, a veteran on the track, and another youngster waiting in line. With that story, here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, Bill Venturini talking to his young son, Billy, who's pulling the Loctite Chevy on the racetrack. If anyone knows anything about speed at Daytona, it's Bill Venturini who holds the undisputed ARCA qualifying record here of 200.209 miles an hour, set back in 1987. He once again talking to his young son, Billy, trying to get Billy the correct line on the first lap of qualifying. A top 10 run for Andy Hillenberg. Bill, what do you say in the Billy about uh, that first lap? I'm just trying to talk to him through qualifying right now and make sure he takes the right line. It, is the first lap momentum mostly in the second lap is really what counts? Yeah, right now we're just trying to build the momentum and uh, make sure he kept the RPMs up high, see what happens through this lap. It'll give me an indication what the second lap is going to be. Okay, Bill Venturini, we're going to let him watch and listen as he watch his young son, Billy, 21 years of age, and, of course, the dad up in the small picture of your screen, a two-time market champion. As soon as they give it to me. <laughs> He's wanting to know his time and speed already. So huh? got a stopwatch here. Guys, I was talking about Andy Hillenberg having a shot at the pole, and he didn't. He qualified 10th, but look, right above him in 9th is his car, Glenn Morgan. We're going to give the times and speeds so they don't have a stopwatch down here. First lap for Billy Venturini, 49.107 seconds. 49.10, Billy, got to pick it up, 49.10. Not as good as first lap as I'd hoped. Well, he's only 10th. That's, that's, that's not bad. No, we I, we were hoping to run in the top five. We still may yet. It depends what he pulls out of his hat in the second lap. This car likes the second lap. All right, sort of like the old man. I guess I save it all for the second lap. Well, he needs it. The car needs it. We'll see what happens.
Pump the brake pedal. Pump the brake pedal. Pump the brake pedal. Forty-eight ninety-nine. Pump the brake pedal because you have no brakes in that car. All right, forty-eight point nine nine two. Indeed, he did pick it up, Bill. You got to be uh, awfully proud. Now that was probably the new tires. We should have probably scuffed them more than five laps, but that's okay. I think we're what eighth or something. You're you're ninth, ninth right now, Bill. Ninth overall. You're ninth overall. We're ninth right now, Billy. You seem a little bit disappointed. You were hoping for a top five, maybe? Yeah, yeah, we thought we could probably run about a 40. 10-4. We thought we could run about a 48.50. Yeah, just a little inexperience with him, a little, uh, not enough testing to see what the tires would do. I should have loosened the car up a little, maybe blow up the tires a little more, but you know, top 10, I'm not gonna complain. Hey, you ought to be proud. It's a tough field here. Get that young man in the field. Gotta be a good day on Sunday. Bill Venturini and his son, Billy, you just qualified ninth overall. Let's check in with Bill Weber. With Andy Hillenberg, 49-12, you're 11th right now, and you're not smiling. No, not really. Uh, I, I shouldn't be so greedy. Uh, yesterday, I felt like we had a fifth or sixth place qualifying car, and um, we had engine trouble all day long today. Um, it just couldn't get running there in the final practice. We, uh, we never ran on all eight cylinders. So, um, you know, I should be happy that it, the motor at least ran well enough to get us in the show so we can go to race setup. Uh, but, you know, I'm a little bit disappointed, but uh, we'll go to work and uh, get that gravy train car up front for uh, Sunday afternoon. We'll be watching. Thanks. All right, Greg Usher is on the racetrack. His first lap was uh, 50th fastest. Not very fast at 165.572 miles per hour. As you look at the positions 1 through 25, we'll tell you that the Russell Landrum car has been bumped. Glenn Brewer is now 26th fastest, and on the bubble is Randall Ritter, the 31 car, 178.550. I'm really impressed at how close this field is in qualifying eight miles per hour between the fastest car and the 25th fastest car. Usher picked it up on lap number two by a full mile per hour, but he's still only 50th quick, 166.522. Now, Dr. Jerry Punch with another doctor, a story that we've been following since yesterday. Jerry? Take a look at the dashboard of Doc Watson's car. That picture on the dash, that beautiful color picture, that is his mother. And yesterday he told us that he grew up as one of six children in Philadelphia. His mother, a single parent. She never remarried, yet she worked so many jobs to be able to give him everything she could give them. But she was never able to support his racing career. Well, when he came to Daytona, before he came here, his mom called him home to Philadelphia, gave him an envelope. Inside the envelope was that color picture on the back. It says, I love you, Doc. And she gave him a $5 bill. He broke into tears and said, I will carry the $5 bill with me in the car, and my mom's picture will ride with me in the ARCA 200. Now Doc Watson tries to take his mom's picture and the memories into the qualifying field for Sunday's race. We check in once again with Bill. With Billy Venturini and his dad here right next to him. And you classify that as fair? Fair. I wanted to be in the top five. Uh, the same guy that told me yesterday you'd never been on the track here before, right? Same kid? Same one, but uh, I also told you I wanted to be in victory lane on Sunday, so I expect a lot from, from me and the team. Uh, and, you know, even though our experience is down, I, I think our, our performance is still good enough for us to be in the top five everywhere we go. How'd the coach do on your qualifying laps? Not bad, not bad. How'd the student do? <laughs> Student did good. I don't think the teacher did well. I should have done a few little things. Uh, definitely found out we didn't get enough oil temp in the car, even though we did a lot of things to try and keep the oil hot. But um, not bad. I mean, I'm not going to complain. We're in the top 10. Uh, first time ever in Daytona for the kid. I know first time I was ever, I was happy to just start the race. And, uh, you know, we, we seem a little disappointed because we've got good expectations for this year. But I'm not I'm not disappointed. I mean, top 10 is good for me. Okay, Billy, you're 21, and uh, right now you're uh, ninth at Daytona. Would you just smile for America, please? <laughs> just for. <laughs> uh, hopefully I'll be smiling a lot after Sunday afternoon. Okay, we'll look forward to seeing that. That's Billy Venturini and Doc Watson out on the racetrack. And he should write the final chapter of qualifying in round number one here for the ARCA race. Randy Roush qualified 51st fastest at 166.1. Three, one. Doc is shooting for a 178.550. That's the speed turned in by Randall Ritter and is the bump speed at the moment. 
and he is the 57th car to attempt qualifying today. We're talking about Doc Watson in the 34 car. Time to beat. 5406178550. And you know the 36th fastest qualifier was Brian Kahn's currently at 174.63. So I really am impressed how close the competition is. Ooh, getting a little loose as he comes mm -hmm. off turn four. Had to fight the wheel there a little bit coming off turn number four. Here's the completion of lap number one of two for Doc Watson. Six million bucks will get you a sponsorship for a pretty good car in Winston Cup. Five bucks brought Doc Watson here, so hopefully he can get it in the field for his mom. That's a great story, too. How'd he do? 51.388, 175.134. Currently is 34th. It might be something he could stand on for tomorrow's qualifying, and especially if it would rain tomorrow, mm -hmm. he would be in the show. There's a possibility of showers here tomorrow, and right now the forecast is for rain on Saturday and possibly on Sunday. But weather is very changeable down here. This is where he got loose the last time. Oh, he's really fighting his baby again as he comes off the corner. But he's able to straighten her out. And here he comes. Can he pick it up a little bit? Sharon Hill, Pennsylvania's Doc Watson has qualified. He was 34th fastest and moves up to 31st. So a good run for Doc. 51.22. 175.702 miles per hour. As you said, 31st fast, 31st fastest so far. All right, we will talk to Doc when we come back and we'll su summarize what happened here today at Daytona. And a reminder at the top of the hour, 5 o'clock Eastern Time, Shop Talk in its entirety. We'll be right back. Our Speed World coverage is about to wrap up day two of coverage of uh, the stock car portion of Speed Week 98. Tomorrow we'll have more ARCA, Winston Cup, IROC, and Bud Shootout practice. Then NASCAR Winston Cup qualifying. The run for the Bush Pole Saturday at 2 o'clock Eastern Time here on the Deuce. Then on Sunday we'll have live coverage of the race that will determine the entrant into the Bud Shootout. 11 o'clock Eastern, plus the ARCA First Plus Financial 200 at 1.30 Eastern Time. 7 o'clock tonight and every weekday night, John Kernan is here live at Daytona with RPM tonight. Bill Weber standing by down on pit road. Uh, well, Doc Watson still sitting in the car talking to his crew and smiling when you rolled in here. You happy with that? Yes, sir. The good Lord been good to us. I uh, mean, it's nothing like Jesus Christ and my mama. <laughs> That's my sponsor right there for a little fond dollars. I love it to death. I haven't been here in six, seven years, but this was great. So I want to thank uh, Night Ritter, Philadelphia Daily News, Marty McCabe to help put this package together, and my father. Oh, I call him my dad, Junior Dunleavy. He's great. He's been a really big help to us. And uh, if everybody in the world can pull together like this, we have a better world. He's really thrilled. He's 31st right now. We'll see if he can get in the show, but that's a good effort for him. Now the man that's going to lead this field to the green flag is with Jerry Punch. Well, Bill Sturgis, Kentucky's Bill Barrett said he waited 365 days to come back to Daytona. You wanted it in a bad way, and my friend, congratulations. You got it. You're the pole sitter. Oh, thanks, Jerry. It was... Hard year. <laughs> Thanks, my wife. <laughs> we need this. Timmy Cahooth, Jim Michaels, great motor. Then uh, first pole. And what a, what a wonderful place to win it. Did you dream about this someday? You dreamed about coming here and being able to sit on the front row. I know this will be a special moment you will remember the rest of your life. 365 days. I lived it and died it. And we made it. And possibly on Sunday, he will win it. We're going to let Bill Baird go on into the media center where the entire media from around the motorsports community will celebrate his poll as we go upstairs and check on results for qualifying for round one of ARCA. Folks, in the last two minutes, you've just seen what it's all about, emotion. Exactly. Folks are thrilled to death to be on the pole and folks thrilled to death to be in the race. There you see the first 15 cars. There's the, the 16 to 30, 25 is all we qualify today. So the, the lineup may change a little bit. We see Adam Larson back in 30th spot. And the rest of those who qualified here today on a beautiful day.